Welcome to Huntington Bank Stadium, home of the Minnesota Golden Gophers as we get set for what ought to be a terrific battle. There's just something about the nightcap. After a day of wall-to-wall -wall football, it just seems this is when chaos ensues. As we'll see a squad from the ACC, the North Carolina Tar Heels, taking on a team from the Big Ten, the Minnesota Golden Gophers. 48 Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, can't wait to get this one started. The Golden Gophers will kick it away to start us off. He'll start the return inside his five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. The Tar Heels offense will get the first possession of the game. And these guys involve everybody in the passing game, and none more prominent than this big fella. And the quarterback knows he's going to be under duress in this game, so who do you look for? The tight end, and there aren't many better than this guy. No, and just big bodies that you can miss a little bit high, and it really doesn't matter, but over the middle of the field, closer, close, so nice to have a security blanket with a great tight end. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. Johnson wants to throw it. And that pass will be jarred loose on second down. That brings up third down. Well, the quarterback knew he wanted to go to his tight end on that play. He's a big physical target, but it was the hit on the play that forced the incompletion. So already a challenge on this opening drive. It's third and nine. They try to pop a run on the draw. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. And you hear about run blitzes. This is exactly what a run blitz is. When you know the ball's coming up the middle, you want to bring those linebackers, get them closer to the line of scrimmage, and fire. Right when the ball snapped, he's coming downhill, doing a good job of creating the loss. That linebacker really knew what was going on. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. He'll signal for and make the fair catch right around midfield. So Minnesota's offense will have its first possession of the game. And if these two guys wind up getting matched up, David, we'll see what wins, speed or force. Yeah, and you love to be physical and set the tone, and this linebacker does that consistently. Now, Jesse, keeping up with the speed on the other side, that's a different animal. Might be different, but we're going to see this receiver work underneath on some drag routes. You better be careful. You do not want to get caught in the wash against this linebacker. Man, when I can run the football like that on first down and create second and inches and stay way ahead of the sticks and, and be in a position now where I can throw the football or run, I will have a lot of success on the offensive side of the football. They'll go right back to the run. Slam to the ground, but not before he gets the first down. All right, nothing flashy there. He just did what it took to get the first down. They'll snap it from the 39, first and 10. From the gun, give on the inside. Never gives anyone a clean shot at him. He's down to the 34. Hey, five to six yards a pop. I don't know if you guys are really good at math, but that usually equals a first down every couple of carries. So don't forget about the run game. Keep them honest, pound that rock. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. The give to the back. And he's a real nowhere man tackled in this no-gain land. Linebackers in today's football, obviously, guys have gotten smaller. they got to play in space more, cover fast guys out of the perimeter. But how about this linebacker coming downhill and making a physical tackle in the hole? Line is set on third down. To the air, it's Brosmer. Receiver looks it in, it's complete. Offenses gain momentum with third down conversions like that. They've got it at the 25. That's tough on the defense there. Third down, you're in zone coverage. Everybody's watching the quarterback, and you're trying to make a break on the ball, but he just got it out of his hands too quickly, and the throw was too accurate. Really nothing you can do there, and it's now a fresh set of downs. 
Wants to throw on first down off the play fake. Dances away from him. And the quarterback bought some time, but not enough. Down he goes with the sack. He tried to go play action, but that did not affect the defensive tackle. He was bull rushing his guy, collapsing the pocket. He comes away with the sack. A first down sack can wreck a drive. Let's see what they've got on second and 14. Off the play fake. Fires deep toward the end zone. Reacted well to the tip, but just couldn't squeeze the football. Instead of the turnover, it'll be third down. Good job on defense, getting a hand on it, tipping it up in the air. They weren't able to pick it off, but they do force the incompletion. It's a makeable field goal from the 29-yard line. Let's see how aggressive they are on third and long. Looking to throw, and he needs a chunk play. And the quarterback will take a sack back at the 36. Things working pretty well for this defense. Out of the dime package and still getting plenty of heat on the quarterback. Yeah, get off the rock. Understand the situation. Uh, all the fast guys got the back end covered. It's my job to seek and destroy the quarterback. Great job by the defensive line rushing after that guy and getting him on the ground. They'll try to put three on the board as the field goal unit comes on. And he's going to have to get into this football. This is a 53-yard attempt. He splits the yep rights and puts three on the board. And with that, they break the seal on the scoring. It's 3-0. Well, this team knew coming into tonight's game, they had to get momentum early, playing at home. They want to get the crowd into it. So you get a beautiful drive here to start this thing. You would have liked to cap it off with a touchdown, but listen. Set yourself up for a field goal. You knock it through the uprights. You've got the lead. Everything right now looking good. After that last field goal drive, they're set to kick it away. On the move from inside is five. Couldn't find a way to create that broken field as he stopped at the 25. The North Carolina offense returns to the field. Boy, three and out last time, David. They'd like to be more productive this time around. Yeah, in the last drive, nothing really good. No rhythm. Got off the field really, really quickly. They need to put something together here. Yeah, David, bad execution on that last drive. So they got to take a collective breath and start playing like a unit. Eight-yard pickup on first down leaves them with second and short. Try to get the edge with a quick touch pass. And he's got enough for the first down. It'll be at the 35. And just went with something very easy, very reliable. Flip it forward. Let your receiver do the rest. I only got to get a few yards. Nice job. Nice execution. First down. Ball is at the 35. It's first and 10. Johnson looking to throw. He's got his man. I think really good wide receivers do a good job of making every route kind of look the same. You could tell he made this look like a vertical route. So if I'm a DB, I'm bailing, and all of a sudden he sits that hitch down. Nice job by the wide receiver, creating enough separation to create a positive game. Looking at a second and short now. They'll leave it with him. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. How about the defender being a heat-seeking missile? He was on radar lock. He found the football and flew down with some bad intentions. They've got it at the 41, third and short, trying to keep the chains moving. From the gun, wants to pass. Unloads it left. He makes a catch. Finally run out of bounds, but he has this offense rolling with a first down. Well, look, that wasn't a touchdown, but that was a massive play for this offense. They needed some momentum. They needed to find a rhythm, and what better way than converting on third down? Awesome job by the quarterback getting through his progression. Wide receiver coming across in motion. Touch pass on the jet sweep. Got the first down and more. Delivers the contact. 
And it is a chunk play, a huge gain on that one before the defense brings it to an end. It's so hard for a defense to have to stop plays like that because it really forces you to play with great eye discipline. You see the pre-snap motion. Defense doesn't know if he's just running across the field and is going to run a route, if he's going to block, or if he has the football. That time, he was able to outflank the defense and hurt them to get that first down. And with that stop, we are headed toward the end of the first quarter. That's going to do it for the quarter, and Minnesota has the lead here. Guys, let's have a look at the stats as we played one period. Now to see if these guys can get back in the game as we open the second quarter. They'll try to pop the draw. And they swarm him under. I think the OC would have been really happy with a small game and, and an easier third down. How about the effort by the running back to get this close? He, he saw the first down marker, tried to get to it, got close enough now where it's an easy situation on third down. And shoot, and I got fourth down in my pocket if I want to go for it. Tight quarters deep in the red zone, but they can pick up a first down without scoring. Third down. Quarterback quick pass to the receiver. And boy, is he close to that first down, maybe just a couple of inches short. And these little touch passes, man, they're just the easiest completions ever for quarterbacks. Palmer, I bet you would have loved being able to just flip it forward. That counts as to your completion percentage, which is good. And then it's all run after the catch, so pretty easy for a QB. You wouldn't have been the only All-American in this booth, David, if I were allowed to put, have push passes <laughs> when I was playing quarterback. I'll tell you that. It is so hard to defend. It's so hard to seal that edge, especially when this guy's full speed ahead coming around on the inside. Well, everybody in the stadium thought that was an automatic three. Not so fast. Bad miss by the kicker. The Minnesota offense is headed back onto the field. Man, how comforting is it to know that even if your offense stalls out a little, Jesse, that field goal kicker can knock it in from a long way out. Well, he's one of the best in the country, Reese, no doubt. But this offense would like him and prefer for him to kick an extra point on this drive. And to do that, David, they've got to have more rhythm on it. Yeah, create some more rhythm, create some more explosive plays, and maybe some more balance. And listen, it's nice to have that weapon and kick long field goals. If you kick too many field goals, you don't get very many Ws. They came out humming on this drive, and now it's first down from the 36. Running back searching for a hole. A strong tackle and wrap up from the junior. And a lot of times you want those big plays. You want those splash plays. But sometimes you're going to take some losses. You're not going to run the football overly well. But if you continue to run it, you can at least create some balance. You at least have the threat of it. Otherwise, you're just going to abandon it. And now it's just going to be a passing game. Looking to throw, it's Brosmer. Oh, what a grab by the defense. Continues to fight for yards. And a big return after the INT sets up the offense for this possession. A really nice job by the linebacker there, understanding his responsibilities in that coverage. That's a cover two look. So there's two safeties playing deep. But the linebacker knows there's nobody underneath him keeping him close to the line of scrimmage. So he can kind of float back a little bit, watch the QB's eyes, jump the throw, and make the pick. And the sudden change situation even more difficult for this defense facing a first and goal. They'll try to get it in with the run. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. That is a great play by the defensive end. The most athletic players on the field play defensive end. Yes, you heard me, Jess. Reese, exactly what I said. Great get off. Great job getting in the backfield, making the play. Defense rolls up deep in its own end on that last play. Now a second and long coming. Can't hang on in the end zone, and that one is going to drive him crazy when he watches it. It'll be third down. Man, these windows get tighter down here in the red zone, and those catches are a little bit more contested, more people near you, and it gets a little bit more difficult. But you need your players to step up for your QB and make big plays. I think he's going to look back and say, I should have made that play. They're going to throw it on third and goal. 
And the pass is intercepted. And he's brought down and this defense gets the ball back for its own. That's the advantage right there of having your dime personnel on the field. You've got an extra DB. You've got an extra guy out there who's really good at covering. So for quarterbacks, you've got to be so good and precise with these passes because they've got speed in the back end. They're able to come away with the pit. Minnesota has it back in the Gopher offense is headed onto the field. After that last pick, David, they really need to take care of the ball this time. No doubt. And, Palmer, I want to know what Spurrier said to you on the sideline after a pick. Do that again, and you'll be right here beside me for the rest of the game. <laughs> you got to go out. you got to call your plays. And I hope this coaching staff isn't going to be afraid to throw at this drop. Solid pickup of four on first down. It's second and six. They think they can create space here with a run to the right. And they make the tackle, but he has plenty for the first down. I love when players understand situations, and they understand where the first down marker is, and they understand where I got to get to. A lot of people you'll see run north-south and try to bounce out wide and make big plays. Sometimes it's not about making big plays. Sometimes it's about getting that first down to make sure I get an extra set of downs instead of trying to make those big touchdown runs. And he could not get loose on the run. You know, great job by the whole defense. But how about that little bit of defensive back throwing his face in the fan? I ain't scared. I don't just cover guys. I make tackles. They got nothing on the last play. It's second and ten. They go to the ground. Just gets it to the 28 pickup of one. I like feeding my guy. I like getting my running back touches, feeding the ball so he can break some of those big runs. But I'm also okay with these little ones. Set the tone, stay balanced. They line up, and it is a long way to the sticks from here. On third down, he'll try to pick it up through the air. A strike downfield. He's run out of bounds, but not before turning in a big pickup and moving the sticks for a first down. And listen, the defense knew coming into this one, they were going to target him early and often. He is a weapon, and there's no mystery where the quarterback's going to be looking on critical down and distances. Let's see how they're able to cover him throughout the rest of this game. Leaves it with the back. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Man, what a spectacular play by that defensive end to come up with the tackle there. And you see those guys get off the football so fast. Most of these guys are 250 to 275 pounds, but they get off the ball fast, low. And the offensive linemen, they have no chance to stop those guys as quick and as fast as they are. Caught over the middle. It's Jackson. They make the stop, but not before he takes a chunk out of what they need to move the sticks. We've reached the two-minute warning, and we'll see if the offense can build on this lead before the break. They've started a pretty good drive. This will be the seventh play, but they need to convert third and five. Back to throw, it's Brosmer. Got the quick pass. And they stop him just short of the stick. It'll bring up a decision on fourth down. They were really hopeful he could make a guy or two miss and pick up the first down, but he comes up a little short. Yeah, and it's great defense. It's defense understanding where the sticks are, not missing tackles, getting the guy on the ground quickly. Really nice job by the defense understanding the situation. And the ball hits at the three and gets into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. North Carolina has it back in the Tar Heels. So pleased to send the offense back out. Trying to start the drive with a pass. Fires to the big fella. And he might be known for one pitch, but that was a sure and heavy tackle on the tight end. I'll say this, man. In college football, you see a lot of bad tackling. You didn't see it right there. That was an awesome job. First off, being there at the point of attack, once the tight end made the catch, there was no doubt. He was going down. Great job form tackle. On second down, looking again to throw. Fires to the right. Had the pick in his hands and couldn't hang on, and you just won't see that from him very often. It'll be third down. 
All right, QB, I gotta trust you, man. You already threw one pick. Now that one probably should have picked. You gotta give me a reason to feel confident I can drop back and let you throw the football again, or else this leash maybe gets a little bit short. Maybe we start warming up the righty in the bullpen. On third and long, trying to have a big completion here. Throws to the tight end. Another incompletion on third down. Oh, and you'd love to have that play back if you're that defender. Third down, and you almost pick that off. That's a catch you need to make. If he catches that, that might be pick six. The Tar Heels will try to pin them back with the punt. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. On the move, looking for a little sliver of hope. They'll put a stop to that return as he gets it up to the 41-yard line. The Minnesota offense is headed back onto the field. In modern college football, Jesse, if there's time, there's an opportunity to attack. And I like them being aggressive here, too, guys. Look, they, they practiced this all week long. Now you're in that situation to go out there, have some fun, and let it fly. And defenses are taught to stay deep, play prevent in these situations. So I think you could get a good chunk play and then possibly get a field goal to tack on before the half. To the air, it's Brosmer. He'll throw it. Fires to the big fella. How about this backer in pass coverage and bringing the big hit stick with him, too? Offense calls a timeout here, critically important to make sure they have the right play called and everyone on the same page here. He'll throw on third down. Got his man quickly. Nice job to pick up the first down and they'll spot it at the 42. Time dwindling away as they try to put points on the board right before the half. He'll come out throwing on first down. Pass falls incomplete, and there are still three seconds left. Man, he was open. He had an opportunity. He just got to look that thing. A lot of times guys are catching it, and as they're catching it, you see their heads start to turn to try to think about getting up field. They just lose that concentration for a second. A little missed opportunity there for this offense. Final seconds of the first half, and they'll try to put up three. And he rushes it right through the upright. It's good from 59. going to wrap up the first half here and now we join Kevin with the halftime update. Guys, it is hard to beat Minneapolis when that town is buzzing as it is today. And I get it. A lot of coaches will say the difference between winning and losing comes down to stopping big plays and getting big plays. But if you ask me, it's more about how good you are on third down and how efficient you are in keeping drives alive. Those two stats can help you break the will of even the best defenses and help you come out on top. And with that, let's send it back to our guys at the bank there in the Twin Cities. And the Tar Heels will line up to kick off and start the second half. He'll bring it out. It's Taylor. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lane till they'll stop him at the 16. Minnesota has it back, and the Gopher offense is headed onto the field. They start this third quarter with the lead, but they might want to think about shoring up that protection. Yeah, the good news is you're leading on the scoreboard. The bad news is your quarterback doesn't feel like it because you can't protect him. So, David, adjustments in pass protection, that has to be something they were talking about here at halftime. 100%. Just, you, you can't get him hit that much. He's still doing a good job delivering the football, but if you keep hitting the quarterback enough, man, they'll start to see ghosts, they'll panic, and they'll make some of those mistakes. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. Fast motion from the offense. Quarterback touch pass on the jet sweep. The defense wouldn't let him loose there, and it was a completion, but they lost yardage. 
Got to give the defense credit. Watching film, anticipating. They knew that this offense had this play in their back pocket. They knew about the speed of this wide receiver and different ways they were going to try to get him involved. Everybody on defense on the same page playing together. I love it. Every defense in the country talks about getting offenses in predictable third and long situations where I can bring on more speedsters and I know the pass is coming so I can have more success. And the Golden Gophers send out the punt unit. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. Surprisingly makes a fair catch just outside the 40-yard line. The North Carolina offense returns to the field. The sledding has been tough. Scores have been at a premium, Jesse, and every possession seems like it could switch the momentum of the game. Yeah, Reese, for this offense, just feels like they just haven't been as physical. For this offensive coordinator, David, he's having to go deep into the playbook just to try to generate a first down. Well, and the good thing is there's not a ton of game pressure because the other side's not scoring either. But if you can find that one thing that get that one positive play and then maybe you get those juices going and something can start to build. They bring him down, but a solid pickup to put them in position to pick up a first down. I think this receiver's forte is his route running. He's a guy that can line up all over the field, but it's not just catching post routes and goes. This guy can run shallows, he can run slants, he can run the option routes and find soft spots in the defense. This guy really has all the routes in his toolbox. Turns it on in midfield. And perhaps a touchdown saving tackle as they get him down at the 37. I mean, those are so frustrating for defenses because you're flying upfield, you're trying to get to the quarterback, and they slip that draw in there, and you can tell too many guys not doing their job created some space for the running back to make the big play down the field. The Tar Heels will hustle to the line. again and unfortunately we've been saying that all game long really really good defense or listen you can spin on the other side this offense has really been bad after the misfire it's second and ten Johnson wants to throw it trying to get to it and this sophomore able to wreak some havoc and get the sack well, this game really has turned into a defensive struggle, and both defenses right now are just absolutely dominating. That time, nice job using his pass rush moves, getting to the quarterback, and they just look like they cannot be blocked right now up front. This is a third and long. Looking to throw, and he needs a bunch. Now he's going to send this one deep to the right. Oh, and he gets downfield for the big catch. They make the stop, but not before he sets them up with a first and goal from the 10. That's a beautiful pass and catch. I love the job the quarterback does manipulating the defense with his eyes. He froze that safety, and that allowed his receiver more room to work his route. And the Tar Heels line it up with a first and goal. They'll try to get it in with the run. And he'll glide his way in for the score. Touchdown, North Carolina! And this running back is so dangerous down close to the end zone. He's got wiggle, he's got great vision and burst. And he showed all of those attributes right there. PAT unit on the field. And the extra point puts them on top by one. So that was a six-play, 75-yard drive. And the capper on that drive, the 10-yard touchdown run. Just about set to kick it away. Number 37, set to kick it away. 
looking for those open spaces and opportunity. Not nearly as much as he'd hoped when he brought it out of the end zone. He'll be stopped at the 15. The Minnesota offense is headed back onto the field. And in a low-scoring game like this one, David, every possession is magnified. And I think more than anything, it just gets frustrating. And you got to put that behind you. you got to see what this defense has been doing to be so successful. Palmer, now use it against them. Yeah, David, I think for a play caller, this is tough, right? It's like you have to have the perfect play on just to get a first down. In these types of games, I think you're just trying to get guys out in space, see if a dude can break a tackle. Maybe that generates an explosive play, and it breaks this trend. They make the stop, but there is a flag on the field. We'll see what that's all about. So the decision has been made, and the coach will take the penalty. They'll line up for a second down play. Gets it out fast. Makes the catch, and he's brought down. They were able to get the ball to the running back in space, but that space just evaporated. And a great job by the defense, man. It's tough to get those guys on the ground. They're so used to being having the football as running backs and making plays and being dynamic. So usually one guy not going to get into the ground. You want many guys swarming to the football, trying to get that elusive guy on the ground. Getting some heat. And the quarterback goes down all the way back at his four-yard line. This offense is going to have to come up with a plan to block this guy. He is an absolute monster, and he showed you all his tools on that sack. The Golden Gophers will call on their punt team. Three and out and not much choice but to get rid of the ball. Sometimes avoiding disaster is the best thing. The punter just gets it out of there. And the punt team gets down there and gets the return man on the ground. North Carolina has it back in the Tar Heels, so pleased to send the offense back out. From the gun, the ground game. And I think they'll give him two on that one, second and eight coming up. I never know if it's grammatically correct to say a team is being out physical. You hear it a lot in football, though. That's happening in this game. They are just not getting the push they need all game long up front to have any success when they decide to run. After picking up a couple at second and eight. Now they'll run the draw. That's what you expect from a senior. Don't give them any extra yards. Great tackle there. They'll need to get the ball to the 34 to convert this third down. Johnson looking to throw. He's got his man, makes the grab. He gets it oh so close to the first down marker, but I think he's going to be a touch short. Just not able to shake enough defenders and comes up a little bit short. And I think a lot of times on third down, Reese, you bet on your guy. When you're an offensive guy, you say, okay, he's going to break a tackle. He's going to get north and south and somehow get the first down. Nice tackling by the defense, understanding where they had to get to and forcing the fourth down. It's good. He could have hit a string right in the middle of the uprights there. Well, the head coach decided to play it safe on fourth and inches and trot his field goal team out there, and his field goal kicker just made him look like a pretty smart guy. So they're lining up to kick it off after that last drive. Put a three spot on the board, and now the defense will try to shut him down. From inside the 10, here he comes. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. And he dropped it. It looked for all the world like that would be a catch, and he just got too excited. Well, they're trying to hit the slant, right? That's a bang-bang type play. It's got to happen fast. Good throw. Receiver just couldn't come up with the catch. After the incompletion, it's second down.
from the shotgun, they'll run it. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. And you can tell that play went nowhere from the start. It was definitely a great play by that defender. Oh, yeah, he got in the backfield so quick, the running back had absolutely no chance. You make up the game plan and not a lot on the play sheet for this. Third and long from inside their own 20. To throw, it's Grosmer. Got it set up on the outside. He didn't quite get that route run deep enough to pick up the first down. Now they've got a fourth and short. And I think everybody at home tends to yell at their television set. Why aren't you getting past the first down marker? Why did you run your route short? Defense did a good job knowing where that was. But now, fourth down, offense has to make a decision. And the Golden Gophers will bring the punt team onto the field. He'll be content with the field position, making the fair catch right around the 30-yard line. The North Carolina offense returns to the field. Off the play fake on first down to throw. Fires to the middle. Oh, he drops the football. He had him right down the gut of the field. Instead, it'll be second down. I like the idea by the quarterback. He wanted to attack the middle of the field. He found his open guy. The receiver's just got to be able to make a play for him. Final play of the quarter coming. One man in the backfield, and he gets it. And as they get him to the ground, clock running. Looks as if time will expire here in the third. Guys, we've reached the end of the period, and North Carolina's on top. They're sitting in a strong position here with the lead. Let's take a look at our game summary. When you're dealing with a deficit like this, it's all about somebody stepping up to make a play, and you might as well start here in the fourth quarter. Third and long, and he'll try to throw for it. How about that play to get a hand in there and force the incompletion? And that is a frustrating possession for this offense. You wanted to run the football, maybe take some time. You did the opposite. Got in a bad situation, threw the football, stopped the clock. Not how you manage a game late in the fourth quarter. The Tar Heels will punt this one away. He's going to try to flip the field with this one. Fair catch called for, but a flag is on the field. Let's see what that's about. The officials offer the deal, and the coach accepts it. They will take the penalty. To the air on first down. Throws to the wideout. Wide open downfield. And he's knocked down immediately, but not before he moves the chains. And there was no question in that scenario. That's where the quarterback was going. He knew he had his receiver in a matchup that he liked, running a route where he would find himself open. Nice job between those two. And the Tar Heels will snap it on first and ten. The inside handoff. And he's able to find a little bit of running room before they get him down. It's a point in the game, I think, as a coaching staff, where you really challenge your offensive line to go win the football game, right? We've got to lead late. We're going to run the football. And the defense and everybody in the stadium knows that's what's going to happen. Can we run the ball down their throats and impose our will? That's what this offense right now is trying to do. Looking to the big tight end. It's caught. And they reacted well to the completion, but it was too late to keep them from getting the first down. And you see tight end matchups all over the field all the time. Now, it used to just be in the red zone. Now, you just find the big fella, you put him in the slot, try to give him the ball as much as possible because you know he can make big plays. The Tar Heels look to keep this drive humming. He's got it on the right. Oh, what a move! And he gets it down to the four-yard line before he's finally stopped. A terrific run after the catch. Looks as if we have an injury on that last play, and we'll take a break to check him out. And this offense not only has a chance to extend the lead, but they can also drain that clock. They'll use the running game on first and goal. He steps and powers and works his way. They finally get him down at the two. Second and goal for the offense.
Tries again to get it in. And he's swallowed up at the line of scrimmage by the big defensive tackle. And with the stuff there, Jesse, on second down, this little third to mid-range, you got two downs. What are you thinking? Maybe getting your quarterback out on the perimeter and giving him a run pass option. See if you can get the defense in a line. A touchdown here on third and goal really ratchets up the game pressure. And they're able to make the tackle. Man, it has been a long drive offensively. I just feel like you've got to pay this off and be aggressive. You're down close. Punch it in for a touchdown here, Paul. Yeah, and inside the three-yard line, I think I might try to finish this off with a touchdown. I ate up a ton of clock, wore these guys out. Now they'd have to go the length of the field if I missed. Trying to punch it in. And he'll find the end zone. Touchdown, Tar Heels! And how about this offense? It's a big situation on fourth and goal, and you trust your running back. You trust your offensive line. You trust the physicality of this unit, and they reward that trust, and they punch it in for six. Lining up to add another. And the extra point is up and good, and they have an 11-point fourth-quarter lead. They went 54 yards on that last touchdown drive and finished the deal with the short touchdown run from the two. Kickoff team has the ball teed up, and they're about ready to go. He'll bring it back from inside his five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. Minnesota has it back, and the Gopher offense is headed onto the field. Their drive chart is starting to look a little monotonous. Punt, 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 David. And their defense is starting to get a little frustrated, too. They just keep putting me back on the field, possession after possession. Jesse, this offense needs to get their heads out of there, and you know what? The punter's on the sideline with the oxygen mask right now. He's been playing so much. He's not used to this. This offense, they just got to stay on the field. They've got to put a drive together and get some balance going, running and throwing the ball. And those two couldn't make the connection. It's an incomplete pass. Not exactly the ideal situation for this offense. Third and long, back up inside their 20. To the air, it's Brosmer. Got his man in the middle. And he's not going to make it. The defense denying him the first down. They'd hope to be able to pick up enough after the catch, but a good stop leaves them with a fourth and short. Really good job by the defense being physical, understanding the situation in the game. The ball's going to come out quick. You know that. Go make the tackle. Force the fourth down. On fourth down, they'll try to throw it. And they'll finally get him down after a terrific pickup. This is the moment for this offense to put a drive together. It doesn't matter what's happened up to the point of this game, but you're trailing right now. You've got to put some points up on the board. This is where all 11 guys need to be playing together as one. The Golden Gophers racing to the line in the hurry up. They want to just keep throwing it. Finds his big tight end. And he laid the lumber to stop it from getting the first down. I'll tell you, when you've got a tight end like this, it makes it a lot easier calling pass plays on first down, even if the defense is in zone coverage. He did a really good job there working his leverage, finding the soft spot, and making it an easy completion. Looking to throw on second down. Quickly to the tight end. Tackle is made at the 48 and to pick up a five and enough for the first down. Ever since they invented the forward pass, the tight ends have been running the drag and getting the first down. I think it's because the tight ends, is so much versatility. You know, they can block and stay in the formation or they can release and come out. But either way, if the quarterback's patient, most of the time, that drag route's going to come over. Two minutes now left in this one and time is running short if they want to find a way to pull this one out. 
And the Golden Gophers are on the move. On the run, it's Brosmer. He's right on target. Really confident throw and catch there. Big pickup, and they have a first down. That was a nice pickup, running the drag route and finding that quiet, soft spot in the zone. Yeah, drag routes not only work against man coverage, they work against zone, too. If you can find the soft spot and the quarterback gets it to him early, he can turn up field, and you saw that right there. Wants to throw on first down. Quickly complete. Didn't pick up a lot there. Moved it forward just a few. This offense has their work cut out for him, man, because the coverage has been so tight. And if you're not throwing to the sideline or you're not getting past the sticks, this defense is going to tackle you inbounds like they just did on that last play and bleed the clock. Sprinting to the line to try to get this one off. Clock's running. On second down, he's looking downfield. Slings it downfield. Complete downfield. And he makes a grab. Defense draped all over him, and it's first and goal at the nine. Defense is backed up. Shadow of the goalpost trying to defend their own end zone. Takes a snap, wants to throw. Makes the catch. And he won't be able to push his way in. He stopped at the one. Quick timeout call by the offense after the play, trying to preserve every minute possible. He's looking to throw. Oh, man. Oh, most picked off in the end zone. What a red zone stop that would have been. It's third down. Well, I love the coverage on defense. In the red zone, everyone's got their eyes on the quarterback, and they're flying to the football, and you saw that there on the incompletion. This offense has been unable to find the end zone all day. Can they do it on third and goal? Back to throw, it's Brosmer. Fires to the end zone. And good coverage there to knock it away and deny the score. Third and short in college football today, you see so much more pass than you used to. The offense stays aggressive. And I think they stay aggressive because they know they're in field goal range. They got that three in their back pocket. And they'll run the field goal unit back out there. This kicker has already banged a couple through. Between the uprights, it's good. After hitting that field goal down a possession here late, one time out in your back pocket, I'm thinking we're still going to see onside kick here. So nice job by the kicker. They're not going to throw the uprights. Now the big question, can he execute the onside kick? Just over 50 seconds to go. They're trying to pull off a comeback, and they'll need to get this onside kick to do it. Looks as if the hands team will be able to recover the ball. And this is why you put your hands team on the field most of the time. You, when you know it's coming, and you put those guys that are great catchers of the football. The first guys, what do they do? They go block. They go blow somebody up. The next guys catch the football, secure it, get your butt on the ground. And most of the time when you do this, the ball game is over. 